So, we're going to our next speaker. Who has citizenship in the United States, Canada, and Ireland? So when the zombie apocalypse hap happens, he has options. <laughs> no, not an option? I have other three passports. Oh, what do you got? Oh, I have United States, Moldova, and Romania. Oh, three options also. Oh. Who's going to survive the zombie apocalypse? <laughs> we'll find out. Either you or Malcolm. Please come to the stage. Good afternoon. Uh, talk about a hard act to follow. <laughs> Good grief. Wasn't that awesome? <laughs> yeah. I want to go and roll in something. I, I, don't, I don't even know what I want to enroll in. I just want to make a difference. Oh, there you go. OK. All right. All right. Um, hi, I'm Malcolm. I'm the head of data strategy with Prophecy Software. I need to make a few disclaimers and a few apologies in advance. First, I am 95% confident that the eggs I had this morning at the Hilton Garden in Ybor City were toxic. I feel horrible. So please forgive me, but the show must go, must go on. If I dart off, uh, it's, it's because the eggs are making a return. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, because I don't feel great. Uh, second disclaimer and apology. I don't know Python or R. <laughs> Mi gente. All right. Um, I don't know Python or R, and I was watching the presentations this morning from, from Jared and Joe. I was like, you might as well be speaking Swahili. And every time that he said there's something for dummies, I'm like, here comes the bit for me. And then, no, it wasn't about that. It was about dummy data. Um, but I do know that he had parameter misspelled on every slide. <laughs> Just saying. Uh, so I'm here to talk about MDM. Master data management, and I was talking earlier with, with some folks. I had a, this presentation is, is designed for an hour. I'm going to cut it way down. We're going we're to take just the abridged version here, but I was talking to others earlier, and this is before I felt like I was going to literally die, um, and, and saying, you know, hey, I'm here to talk about MDM. Well, what's MDM? I was like, oh, okay, oops, all right, uh, maybe I need to change the presentation. And uh, talking about kind of like who I am and where I come from, and I'm, well, I'm an ex-Gartner analyst, because I am. I was at Gartner, and, and they're like, what's Gartner? Um, I'm like, okay, all right, uh, credibility, uh, low. Um, and uh, so, so this is going to be an abridged version. Uh, I talk about this stuff day in and day out. I have been uh, a CIO. I have run a product organization. I've been an analyst. I've been a consultant. I've written these things called magic quadrants in case that actually... Right on, brother. One, one, one for the magic quadrant. Um, so I'm, I'm going to share some information today about something called MDM, Master Data Management. What is MDM? It's basically three things. It's a discipline that is technology driven. Um, two, it is about a common governance approach to, number three, shared data. Okay? So, Shared data, customers, assets, locations, employees, parts, material, the data that is shared widely across the organization, which naturally ends up getting highly replicated. There's different governance policies for it. Data sitting in a CRM system is drastically different than data sitting in an ERP system, even though it's representing the exact same thing. MDM is designed to solve this problem. Acme, Acme Inc., Acme Co., Acme LLC. Is that one thing or is that four things? They all have different source IDs. You pull that into an analytics layer, and you'd think that's four things, because it's got four source IDs. And you're going to naturally trust that the business people know exactly what they're doing to create this data. So the problem that MDM solves is, one, is this one thing, or is it four things? So it does that using business rules, governance policies that are created in co collaboration between business folks and IT folks. This is another way, another way of saying this, a uh, fancy way of saying it is something called entity resolution. You may have done this, or maybe you've even created your own R or Python to do entity resolution. That's what MDM is quite good at. The second thing is, if it is one thing, then how do we at least link them together under some common ID, or maybe even physically merge them together? These are what we call two different styles of MDM, analytical versus operational. MDM systems sit between MDM. It's basically a data hub. 
right? We take little snippets, little chunks of data out of source systems. We replicate, <gasps> yes, we replicate some of the data and put it into its own standalone hub and apply these common business rules to it. That's what MDM is. It sits between source systems and the analytical platform that you all run and manage day in and day out. So we square on what MDM is? All right, cool. I'm gonna talk about the future. This presentation is, was kind of designed for folks that, that already know what MDM is and live and breathe in my space. MDM provides something called the single source of truth. And every time that I use the phrase single source of truth, people are like, oh, that's it. Rio, didn't we figure that out 10 years ago? Didn't we, didn't Snowflake figure, fix that? Didn't data virtualization fix that? Didn't big data fix all of that? Didn't all of these other things fix that? No, it didn't, it's still a problem. It is still a massive problem, and I'm sure you're dealing with it day in and day out. Is MDM still relevant? Yes, it most certainly is, because this currently feeling like crap dude says it is. So I said that MDM has transitioned from a nice to have to a must have. I said that in the last MDM Magic Quadrant document for anybody who cares what that is, but I helped write it. Uh, that's me and my business attire. I live in Melbourne, Florida, directly across the peninsula. Uh, if you ever want to come and watch rockets take off, let me know. We can catch a rocket launch in the evening and then watch some turtles in the morning. Anywho, MDM is still relevant. It's not going anywhere. What does the future of this single source of truth look like? Well, it looks kind of like this. This is the future of all data, what we call data management applications. So data quality, data governance, data integration, master data management is all on this path to go from human driven to machine driven. We're somewhere over here. We're somewhere over here. We're gonna move, and we already have, to machine assisted. We call this augmentation, right? This is the application of AI, ML, graph, other things to, to start automating some of the decisions we make about how we manage data. Start automating things like data quality rules. Start automating things like the entity resolution that I was talking about. Letting the robots start to decide some of the governance policies for the data we use day in and day out. I actually fully believe and I'm fully confident that data governance can largely be automated, can largely be automated. And that's the path that we are on from people figuring out what's master data, customer asset, employee, location. How do I model that? What are the attributes that define a customer, right? Historically, people have figured that stuff out. And in the future, it's all going to be machines because we know we'll look at it. We'll figure out what data is used widely. What data is shared widely? What data appears across all these different applications that needs common business rules applied to it? So this is, the, this is where we are going. This could be MDM, this could be data quality, data governance, data integration, doesn't matter. We are on a road to automation, and I think it's a good thing. MDM is inherently about the application of consistent business rules, the application of consistent governance policies. How do I define a customer? What are the attributes of a customer? When is it unique? These are governance policies. These are rules. If we can use the internet to train LLMs, we can certainly use our own data. So I see the evolution of kind of smaller learning language models, right, that are deployed specifically against internal data sets where we are trying to solve and model specific business processes. Quote to cash, procure to pay, these are all, in my estimation, these are all essentially languages that can all be modeled. They can all be modeled. And where the nuances between maybe a customer versus an account is like, are those the same thing? The AI-enabled future we will have, we'll, we'll know that these are the same thing. Of course they're the same thing. Of course they're the same thing. Really, where we're going is something what people like me call a data fabric. You may have heard of a data fabric, maybe you haven't, but a data fabric is, to me, is a world where data itself, data informs its classification and use. So instead of people doing it, instead of people defining the governance policies, the data itself will define its own governance policies. This is really the vision of a data fabric and sitting right in here, something called MDM. This is, what, this is a Gartner graph, so thank you to my ex-employer for those who know what Gartner is. Um, a knowledge graph enriched with semantics. MD, MDM is a turbocharged 
very powerful semantic layer. But if you've heard of a semantic layer, there, there, is a, an, there is a software branch called semantic layer. They link things at a schema level, at a table level. MDM links things at a, at a record level, or field level, object level. Build business rules and far more flexibility in what you can do and what you can't do. But the data fabric is a world where data kind of informs its own use and its own classification. To do that, we have to do something called activating the metadata. This is, this is, this is a, a business person's way of saying deep analysis of metadata, a lot of grass being run against metadata, so that we know, we know when transactions are successful or they're not successful. Right? We can know when data quality is high or when data quality is fit for purpose because we will know when transactions succeed or when maybe they slow down in that quote to cash process. Maybe something takes three days when it should have taken two days or vice versa. Maybe that's an indicator of low data quality. We'll know because we're running graphs against massive troves of transactional data to tell us when things are working correctly or when they're not working correctly. The data will tell us. So I'm not going to go into each of these in more detail. If we want to talk about <laughs> um, what, what I would call critical capabilities of future MDM, um, I won't go into detail. But there's a few things that are kind of interesting. Historically, MDM required a lot of data replication. Right? We would replicate custom records out of multiple source systems and put them into a hub and then apply a bunch of business rules to them in the future. We will match data. We will do that entity resolution to data where it sits. We won't actually have to replicate the data. Um, we're doing, we were moving towards something called adaptive governance. What that really means is that context matters. Historically, it was about coming up with a single set of business rules, one source of truth, one definition of customer to rule them all. When in reality, we know that the way marketing defines a customer is different than the way finance defines a customer this to be true. That's what's meant by adaptive governance. You've got multiple business rules. Same thing could be said for data quality. You could have adaptive data quality where you've got different quality standards based on how the data is actually used in an organization. That's hard. The reason why that's hard is because for, for companies, <laughs> right, having one set of business rules is hard enough. What we're talking about here is N sets of business rules for quality, accuracy, consistency. That's gonna be really hard, but thankfully that's where AI comes in. We're gonna use AI to start automating some of these things and at the beginning augmenting them because it's hard enough. Maybe you've been in that meeting where it's like, hey, we're gonna do a tiger team and work in our customer definition and bring everybody into a table and start talking about, you know, how do we define customer? And finance says one thing, and accounting says, or, and, and marketing says another, and then it's one of these. Well, I'm right. No, I'm right. No, I'm right. No, I'm right. They're both right. That's what being adaptive is from a governance perspective. Um, MDM will tie tightly into data catalogs. Data catalogs are kind of the new black out there. Like if you go to an industry conference, everybody's trying to sell you a data catalog because who doesn't want to do an inventory of their data? Um, blockchain. Yes, I said it out loud. <laughs> Blockchain is not dead. I'm going to talk in a little bit, because I've got six minutes left, about really one, one of the most exciting things I find in the, in the future of MDM, which is intercompany data sharing. Right? So today, in essence, what MDM is, is breaking silos. Silo, silo, silo. I'm going to break them. And we do that because we realize economies of scale. We, emet, we, we realize efficiencies that aren't there when data is siloed. If you view a company as a silo and start breaking silos across companies, there's a lot of goodness there. And the reason why we're going to do this is because we don't want to be caught flat-footed the next time a ship gets stuck in the Suez Canal or the next time there is some other massive disruption somewhere, right? Or, or supply chain interruptions and on and on. Companies are going to start sharing data in more widespread ways than they ever have before. I think blockchain is going to be very, very helpful for that because it's actually going to create an incentive layer for shared governance, for shared business rules. Today, the problem, a lot of companies aren't really sharing data because they don't, it's, it's hard to, for everybody to agree on some of these common business rules, some of the governance policies needed to create a shared data ecosystem. 
maybe even something data as a service or governance as a service. But I think blockchain will help with that because it'll create an incentive layer. Multi-dimensional hierarchies today are hierarchies within MDM systems. This is another thing they do is they manage hierarchies, relationships between customers or suppliers or assets. They're going to be multi-dimensional. You've already seen that today with some of the graphs and some of the uh, visualizations of graph. And of course, data stewardship. We're going, to, we're going to automate the people that are manually reviewing Acme and Acme Inc. Today, often people are doing that. So I won't go through each of these in detail. Um, in my last five minutes, isn't it awesome that like, we can have AI generate what otherwise would be a massive copyright violation? <laughs> that's not Buzz Lightyear. That's somebody who looks just like him. In another version of this, I've got, a, I've got Mel Gibson's like the brave heart. It's like, that's not Mel Gibson. It's somebody that just looks just like him. Um, anyway. Um, <laughs> A hype cycle here, um, kind of metaphor, but things that I see in, in my world trending up, trending down, going away. I won't go through each of these. There's a few things. Product management and data management is kind of on the upswing, and I think that's a really good thing. I'm excited about the application of product management into data management. Historically, we've been pretty insular. We've talked about stakeholders and users. We never really talk about customers, and I think we need to talk more about customers. We need to treat our internal users as actual customers. The product managers can help with that. Uh, I think we are finally going to start doing a little bit more ROI analysis on some of the products that we build, some of the data products we build. Um, I already mentioned about data sharing, context drives truth. So, so the truth is, is interesting. Um, the notion of truth is contextually bound. Within every one context, there's multiple contexts in an organization but within each context, there is still only one version of the truth. So yes, we can chat and say there is no such thing as a single version of the truth because marketing looks at the world different than finance looks at the world. But within each of those various contexts, there is only one version of the truth, including the C-suite. If your CEO asks, how many customers do we have? There's only one answer to that. Don't be that person in the meeting that says, well, it depends. Who's asking? Because I have been. It doesn't, doesn't bode well for your, for your tenure in the data and analytics world. Um, trending down, there's a few things. Ah, oh, data literacy. This, is, this one, I've got a problem with data literacy. I've got a huge problem with it. Um, I, I, I view it to be a bit of a toxic force. Um, the reason why is because if I'm, a, if I'm a product person, if I'm building a widget, right, and everybody hates the widget, they don't use it, the adoption's low, they complain about it, um, they, they don't trust it, Right? Is, is, is the problem the skill of the user, or is the problem the widget? The problem's the widget. Data literacy assumes that our end users don't get value out of the data we provide because their skills are lacking somehow, some way. That may be the case, but we need to look inside before we look outside. We need to look at what we're doing. We need to look at the data we provide. We need to look at its accuracy, its consistency, its trust, trustworthiness before we start saying, well, I think you need some training. You need to go, maybe you do need to learn Python or R, I don't know, I, I don't, but. Uh, what about owners? That just cracks me up, data owners. I am the owner of data. Try having that conversation with your chief revenue officer on day one, right? Sit down and say, hey, uh, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm the data and analytics team and I am now the owner of customer data. I own your customer data, Chief Revenue Officer. Good luck with that conversation. Nobody owns data. We all own data. We all own it. Anyway, separate conversation. I know this is, this is, some of these things are heretical because they kind of challenge DAMA, D-A-M-A. I'm I, I happy to connect offline to go into more detail on a lot of this stuff. I would look forward to a world where we are more customer driven. This is writ large in the data and analytics space, by the way. I challenge the notion of being data first. Be customer first, or as Brett said, outcome first. Work backwards from the outcome. It's not about the data, it's about business value. <laughs> when I was a Gartner analyst, I used to talk to people so often about, you know, how are you going about solving your problem? Well, I'm going to go inventory all my data, and I profile it, and I'm going to glossary it, and I'm going to do, 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 do. And I'm like, time out. 
Why don't you go figure out what the problem is first before you go start with the inventories? I could keep going through, but I, I, I really see that chief data officers are at a bit of an inflection point. A lot of companies are frustrated with a lack of progress from a chief, the chief data officer, and I think because there's too much stuff on the left-hand side, and we need more stuff on the right-hand side. Oh, I mentioned data sharing. I also happen to think we've got a massive, well, I don't happen to think, it's a fact, we've got a massive data hoarding problem. Depending on who you ask, 50 to 80% of data in data centers is dark, just sitting there collecting digital dust. Also happens that the data center industry produces more greenhouse gas than the airline industry. Think about that one. We've got, we, us, have got troves of data sitting there collecting dust, and it's actually negatively impacting the, gov the, the, the environment. If we start sharing data more, maybe we can lessen our footprint on the environment. Lastly, governance. From, rules, from rule management, thou shalt, to more exception management. This is where I see, I see things heading writ large in data and analytics. Be driven by the exceptions instead of driven from the bottom up by rules. I'm out of um, Connect with me, please. Connect with me on LinkedIn, that's, uh, that's me. I'm very active on LinkedIn. I'm posting best practices, insights, advice every day. I've got a podcast called the CDO Matters Podcast. I've got all sorts of stuff and I talk. I'm, I'm like, I literally travel the world talking so I can do better than I did today <laughs> under my, my, my toxic egg fog. Um, but it's been my pleasure to be here. So nice to meet everybody. My apologies, I'm, I'm not networking more because I, I, I really do feel like crap, but thanks for being here today.